Hey everybody, welcome back to another video on my channel and today we have a look into how can we improve the speed of our Nux.js build, especially if not really much changed. Here we go. In previous videos we talked about improving performance on the runtime and also improving performance when generating pages through shared pre-render data. If you have missed these, no worries, they're linked in the description and somewhere there, there you know. But today we have a look into how improving the build time, not even related to the generation process at all. So if you don't use pre-rendering, that might be still worth taking a look at. And the whole idea is once again, caching. So there is a new experimental module called Nuxt Build Cache made by Puya himself, team member of Nuxt.js and lead of UnJS, if you haven't noticed. Um, and he brings the functionality back that was part of Nux2 a while ago. So let's dive into what the functionality is exactly, how it works, we see the improvements time-wise, and then you will see how to use it properly. The first thing we want to look at is a blog post from July 27th, 2020, uh, which was written by Sebastian, Puya, and also co-ordered by me. This blog post discusses a pretty amazing feature when it comes to Nux2 static improvements, which is also related to the build cache once again. Because the full static mode had been introduced back then by also caching all the results from the API calls, then the next thing to improve would be to reduce the build time through a cache. So as you can see here in the chart, with uh, a normal build, things would take quite some time, especially because you have to rebuild everything again. But if nothing changes, we could just use some kind of cache. And that was a built-in functionality back in time, came with Nux 2.14, if I remember correctly. And of course you could exclude files from your cache in a way, module authors could add files to a cache and so on and so on. And with Nux3, that functionality got not really lost, but it didn't exist anymore, mainly because of the rewrite of the server engine, how things worked and so on and so on. But the good news is it's coming back in the form of a module. So once again, this is a very good example on how powerful Nux modules are because, well, you can do almost anything with it. And if not, and if there's something that you want to see, but that's not really technically possible, that's a good chance for an issue and for a feature request. But back to the thing. So from the Nux2 feature, going straight away to the just mentioned experimental Nux3 module. And the whole idea is that it's very similar again. So we have a module called Nux build cache. And the idea is that as soon as you install it, Nux will, during the build step, set up a cache based on the content of each file. And if the content of one of these files changes, then the cache is invalidated. But otherwise, the cache can be reused. And based on Puya's uh, statistics from uh, Twitter as well, it says like, okay, there is a pretty significant decrease in build time, uh, almost uh, two times faster. But of course, this depends a lot on your application, how much components you have to build, what runners you use, and so on and so on. Nevertheless, especially if you have to rebuild, for example, because a webhook triggers, because some things are changed, and you don't really need to rebuild your components or your files, then that module might be for you and it's worth testing out. As mentioned, it's experimental, so if there are some things not going exactly as planned, please raise an issue, but I've used it in a few projects already and for me it works like a chart. Okay, so let's have a look how we can implement it, right? And as usual, our minimal Nux demo application is here again. We have a package.json where we use the latest release of 3.11, 3.11.1 to be exact. And we use the Nux build cache module over here in its latest release 0.1.1. Also in the Nux config.ts, we already have that added to the modules conveniently. And you can do so as well if you just go for npx nuxy module add and then the name, which works also with other modules, of course. And that will not only install it, but also add it to the package JSON. So in our very simple application, we have one app.view. And of course, you can have hundreds of other components that will show also a difference in build time. But for now, we have that. And now we have one more thing, which are server routes. And just imagine you change something on the server routes that doesn't necessarily influence the, the front end. Because if you just have a bug fix, for example, you wouldn't need to recompile all the view components. You wouldn't need to trigger all that, right? So what we'll do now is very simple. We'll just build it, pnpm build, right? And as soon as we build the whole thing, it says, oh yeah, let's scroll up here, no build cache found. 
and it gives the whole URL saying, oh, there is no build cache found for uh, the current build. So the client will be fully built again and we'll say, okay, this is built in a second because there's not much going on, but in your project it might take a bit longer here and there. And eventually then the next Nitro server is also built that's separately from client process, right? And, and then the build cache module comes in and says, okay, very nice. We can collect the build cache based on what we have and it's collected and then we create the cache based on these files that you can see here. And we can do two things now. If we change the content here now in our server route to say changed content, for example, we save this now and rebuild. Let's see what happens. Once again, next 3.11.1 and wonderful. The build cache, right? Needs restoring next from build cache. This is exactly what we would expect because we changed the server part the client doesn't have to rebuild. So we have a very quick build cache restoration. It works, we skip the build, then we create uh, the public folder and we only build the server part because, well, that changed, we should rebuild it for sure. So that means the build time will be cut down. In this case, it's not that significant. Of course, it's then, well, basically 12 milliseconds versus one second for a client that makes a bigger difference for sure. But especially if you have lots of lots of components, it has even bigger effect. And now the whole thing works as usual as before. And to make sure to show you what happens when we change a component or just our app.view, we will do that now by writing, hey, uh, this also changed again. And we'll save this. And if we now hit pnpm build once again, and of course it also works with a different package manager, it says no build cache found. There we go. Because Obviously, the hash is now different based on the content of the files that we have. So there is no way around it. We have to rebuild the whole client once again from that point on, as you can see. And of course, that didn't take that long, right? It's one second for the very simple app to view. But as you know, in your project, it might take a bit longer. And even if you say, yeah, production builds, that's not that big of a deal. Well, the main point is it also takes time of your CI CD which means, first of all, longer waiting time maybe for tests, right? You, you, ha you have tests, don't you? If not, next video, I, I promise. I'll talk about Nux testing in a bit, no worries. Um, of course, but also the whole deployment, if you deploy in Vercel and Netlify, run uh, through their processes, that also means more time, means a bit more costly. So saving a bit of money there by, well, just using that module doesn't sound too bad, huh? And even if you say, ah, okay, I usually change some things in my code, it's not that uh, effective. Sure, but as soon as you have one bug fix, for example, in your server files, in your, in your API endpoints, or add something there, the client will be not rebuilt, but will be used for the cache. So that's already a win. Or if you say, ah, oh, yeah, we, we generate our site, so you use like shared pre render data and so on and so on, and there's a webhook and we have to uh, re trigger a new build. Perfect. That's exactly the scenario where the whole build cache comes into play. And I think that's almost that. Maybe one more thing we could take a look how this internally works very briefly, and then we'll sum it up. So let's jump into the package source code. Interestingly, the module only includes three files, some utils, some cache, and the module, the main module file. So let's have a look into that and see what's happening. First, we have a classic Nuxt module for the find Nuxt module, and then we have a setup function here. And then we say, okay, if we disable the build cache, which you can do through an end variable if you want to, or we're in dev, or it's in Nuxi prepare where that shouldn't be used either, do nothing. Very reasonable. Lots of modules should do that. Opt out if uh, any of these cases are. And then before building, and we'll check once again, uh, should we ignore the build cache? It's also very important. It's not as disabling. It's just like, okay, should it be ignored? Usually fine, but in this case we ignore it. All right, if that's the case, gone. Otherwise, we try to restore the build cache. And if it's possible, of course, then we can say we skip the build as we've seen already in the console, right? And then what we can do if it can't be restored, so there is no cache, then we can once again check, ah, should the build cache be collected or should it be skipped? So do we want to cache that scenario? Also, if you need fine grain control and say, ah, oh, no, in this case, I don't want to, then don't. Otherwise, as soon as everything is done on the close hook, we collect the build cache. And 
How that works exactly is defined in the cache part, so we'll have a look into that right now. All right, and here we also have a couple of functions to check out. So first, let's start with the top level functions that we've seen before, collect, build cache, and restore build cache, because they're pretty similar. In collect, we get the cache store, so we have the hashes, the cache directory, the cache file, and we see, okay, let's create a cache here recursively, and then we create a file to say, okay, we write all the hashes, so basically all the hash contents of the files down there to make sure the cache can be identified. And then we basically say, okay, let's define a start date. And then we log, hey, we collect the thing. Um, we read all the files in, we create a tar that's also very nice based on a nano tar, which actually is also another UnJS package. We create a tar based on the file entries. Then we have a little hack applied for Cloudflare pages because their cache support is a bit trickier. We write the files so we can actually use the cache eventually if we want to and then we just output it. So that's what we've seen before, right? When there was no cache. And for restoring it, well, we do the inverse operation, right? Still, we need to get the cache store. Then we say, is there uh, a cache file? Well, if not, no build cache found, makes sense. Um, we'll have a look into get cache store in a second. And then once again, same idea. Let's uh, do something for the tracking. We parse the tar by reading the cache file that we found before the tar we created before. And then we loop over it and check and if, for example, the thing is uh, up to date or in cache, then we can skip it. And otherwise, we uh, go ahead and uh, write the files there so we can use it. And that's it for the top level function. Now let's have a look into get cache store. That's a bit uh, more interesting because the get hash function is called. And this is basically the point where all the cache hashes are created. So in here, first of all, say, okay, if nux dot underscore build hash, right, private uh, flag, if that exists, we want to use that so we can determine the unique cache key, more or less. The build hash is created all the way at the end. So if this is called multiple times, we can just skip here. We don't have to go through all these. We can just use the build hash because we've seen line 88 over here that will be used. And then very important, we create a, a source array. So we want to have all the sources that will be used for a cache, right? And the whole cache is also layer aware. So if you're using Nuxt layers, uh, and also there, I promise, video is coming. If you use Nuxt layers, the build cache will also consider these. So that's very important. Otherwise, it might be a bit tricky when you change something in a layer below. <sighs> anyway, in this case, the module is taking care of that, which is pretty amazing. And after adding the layer configurations to, to these hash sources, we also make sure to normalize our files and then create a hash based on the content, right? So for all the source files in the layer uh, source directory, all the patterns, so the typical things we have in the application as well as the app, we will apply the whole thing for the source files. And then we normalize them as we had uh, above to just okay, take name, size, and the data, which will be just a hash. Uh, and put them into hash sources. And of course, there are also some root files that are important. So also there for the root directory, something like nuxtrc, npmrc, or log files, because if dependency changes, well, we want to make sure that's the case too. That's perfectly fine. So they will also be put in there. And you might wonder, oh wait, did we miss the main thing? Did we miss the, the main layer, so to say? And the good thing is, no, necessarily, uh, that should also be part here, like the topmost layer is also considered there. So no worries at all, we didn't miss anything. And eventually the build hash is basically the, the hash of all these hash sources and then provide these sources. So we don't have to recalculate it again and again, as soon as it's set, once we can reuse it. And that is more or less a top level overview. Of course, we can now get into how exactly does the Cloudflare uh, pages uh, cache uh, hack works by adding uh, a package JSON and treating things like an NPM package, but that's a bit more too, too in-depth. We can also check how do you write these uh, files recursively, but no worries, you can check out the code for yourself because these are more like low-level I.O. operations. That's uh, nothing Nux specific. Nevertheless, to sum it up, the Nux build cache module made by Puya, Puya is pretty amazing. It brings back a functionality we had in Nux 2 for Nux 3 and even more optimized we can now, because now you can change also your server functions, your API endpoints without rebuilding, and it might make your application faster, especially when only changing things on the server side.
Any questions left? Drop them down below in the comments. Let me know if you use it, if you tried it. And um, definitely see you in the next videos. Take a look around the channel. There's some other amazing things. Last time I talked about web sockets and as I said, testing layers and so on, so on up there. I know lots of people want that and I'll bring the content straight away to you. Until then, see you soon and bye.